Welcome, dear viewers, to the second online podcast of Timebook Lumens. We have a very special guest for you today, namely Lars Mull. Lars is a famous Danish mystic. He has written dozens and dozens of books which have been highly appreciated. So they, they've been translated into many languages such as English and Dutch. So probably you can find them in your local bookstore. We find Lars to be also a very grounded mystic, which makes his teachings very accessible and yeah, relatively easy to grasp and to put into daily practice. So we appreciate that. And Lars also invited his co-worker Nalea Landman into the conversation. And she will do a few prayers with us as well. And yeah, we were very happy with her inputs and her sharings, her wisdom. Uh, I'm recording this video afterwards, so I know uh, what you will be about to see. I'm very happy about it, as you can see. Um, yeah, if you come to appreciate the podcast, uh, you can visit our website for more good stuff. Um, you can leave a donation if you like. We, uh, we thrive on that. We, we can continue to grow and um, expand our reach. So we're very happy with that. Um, and you can enlist uh, for our newsletter as well, which is both in Dutch and in English in the future. All right, uh, for now, enjoy the podcast. Lars Mul, thank you uh, so much for being on our show. Yeah, I'm pleased to be there. Yeah, all the way in, in Denmark. And uh, your name yeah. dropped on my desk uh, twice in one week. And mm. I looked into you and said, wow, what a special man you are. What a, what a life's work you've had already behind you and still uh, are spreading um, your medicine, I would say. Mm -hmm. Very nice. And you also brought your uh, co-worker on our show. Yeah, Nadia and I, we have been working together now since 2017, and it, it, uh, we can always talk about that if you... Yeah, excellent. You know. I've prepared a long list of questions the, the last few very, days. Very, <laughs> Yeah. We love it. <laughs> uh, but I also feel like you've already shared so much in so many podcasts and, and books. You've, you've written dozens of books. Mm. So I, this morning I woke up with uh, another question, and that's mm -hmm. about the impact that teachers like yourself have on the world as, as it is today. Because I see mm. through the ages so many w wise teachers spreading wisdom, spreading truth. But mm. still, the world is in so many crises. Like, what's the impact of teachers mm. and what is the role of so-called evil in the world mm. um yeah so that would be my my starting question yeah so what is the impact of teachers you ask? yeah i mean there's so many offers of everything nowadays it's i mean there's one that after the other uh, come to this do this and as nadia and i we have actually talked about it that one of the, the big problems about what you call teachers and spirituality and so it, it's become another commodity, another something to sell, another business opportunity for many, I, I feel. And it's, of course, every, whatever you do, you should get paid reasonable for what you do because to do what we do takes a lot of preparing. It takes a lot of studying. And there will be a lot of time when you are off uh, the grid, so to speak, in order to find out um, to do more work, you know, inner work and to study a lot. But to us, money isn't the issue here. What we really want to, to do is to inspire people if we can. And I think we are just a speck of dust in the, the whole, in the universe of whatever is being offered in spirituality. But, you know, if you can reach one heart, it's worth the deal. I just once met um, a very well-known rabbi at Einsteinzeit in Israel, and he said, 
And, you know, the most important moment in my life I weren't even, I weren't even aware of. I met a man and he said, Oh, you, you saved my life, uh, back 30 years ago. Oh, the rabbi said, Well, in what way? Yeah, I was sitting, uh, outside my house and I was totally devastated and you came by and you just saw me and you went and say something to me. You said a few words that saved my life. And that's why I'm here now to thank you. And he said, the rabbi told me, and I was not even aware of it that moment. I could not even remember it. So I think we underestimate uh, what we do in everyday life when we meet people. You know, we pass people in the streets, we go to the supermarket, we meet people in all kinds of situations, and we don't even think about spirituality. But it doesn't matter, you know, because a kind word in the right place is so much more spiritual to me than 100 years sitting on a meditation situation on your own. And it is, I'm not saying that to exclude that, because that is also important, of course. But if it doesn't result in us um, becoming what we are really preaching or praying, it doesn't matter, you know. And I think that's the problem for all of us, that we are always, whatever we do in this direction, we are always, always faced. Are we doing it? Are we genuinely enough? Are we, are we truthful enough towards ourselves and what we do? So this is the kind of mirror that we are always looking into. And that I know that also in Aliyah is very, it's very uh, um, important for both of us that uh, we try to keep up to the standards we try to set for other people, you know, or not set up, but, you know, to inspire with. So mm -hmm. I think that that's the, the challenge really for all of us. But in everyday life, we, that's, we want this to work in the supermarket, as we said. And if it doesn't work there, it doesn't work anywhere. It, this is it's not something special. It should be the natural way of living for all of us. Yeah. Yeah, because looking at the past few years, we see a tremendous increase in spirituality. Like so many mm -hmm. people are searching for existential questions and answers like, why are we here? What are we? What's our true identity? And and when I hear your, your answer, like, has, has spirituality been, been wrongly teached over the centuries? Because there's so much been of de decline in, in the world. I don't know uh, wrongly teach. You can always, yeah, I think there's a teacher for everyone, you know, there's uh, inspire, inspiration for everyone who seeks it. And, um, the old word that the teacher will appear when the, the pupil is ready it was certainly um, truthful in my my case. But, you know, a teacher can is, it doesn't have to be a person. It can be a book. It can be a, an inspiration that comes from I don't know where. It's not so important, I think. The teacher is not important. The, the message is important. And that's what's something we should always remember. There's too much uh, guru worshiping going around and all this. And that is, I think, maybe natural for many people when they start on this path because they need somebody to carry their own wisdom. Because what we're teaching is that we are already enlightened. Everything that we look for everywhere, here, there, and everywhere, it, we are already that. You know, we are just... We have to wake up to that fact and take responsibility for it. Mm -hmm. How can we you take responsibility for that? By, uh, by um, ad acknowledging it and uh, start to work from it, you know? you know? Yeah, I feel that. Yeah, we have a, a Dutch teacher who's also saying, yeah, you are already enlightened. You just need to discover it. Mm -hmm. and, and yeah, I think it's such, such a nicer way to look at it instead of, oh, I'm such a traumatized person. I'm, I'm so uh, suboptimal to what I truly are. But Powerless. Hmm? Or powerless. 
we are powerless and it's it's so empowering to look at yourself yeah we are enlightened but we need to discover it it's covered but then the big question how to uncover it that that is what we come into now because that's exactly what we are trying to do to when we do our workshops to try to give people and an uh, experience because if we haven't experienced what we read about in in spiritual books it's still it's just like a ghost somewhere you know we we read about other people's experiences and that can be very inspiring but at the end of the day it's your experience of whatever it is you are seeing that that makes a whole difference and uh, if we haven't experienced it how can we know anything so that's what it is all about if we haven't yes. experienced it how can we know anything yeah yeah we are if, we, yeah. if you have never if you have never uh, driven a car or, or ride a bike how could how can you know what it feels like you know it's, it's it is something we need to experience before we can really talk about it yeah i recognize but that. you could also on the other hand you could also say what is it you know because to me it is you know that kind word or that helping hand in everyday life that makes the whole difference you know that's the experience you know yeah and i've uh, i've heard that before and looking at my own life i totally recognize it like i need i'm so stubborn i need to experience it and then finally get the message get the wisdom but if there's still, nothing new I don't think there's anything new under the sun and I really believe that everybody without doubt know about these things it's just kind of being pulled into the background by co- because of social um conditioning and the way we were raised and how everything is arranged in in the society today we have forgotten all about wisdom about what love really is what is love and i think there's too much wellness uh, thoughts about what love is it's it become a kind of uh, pinkish uh, cloud up in the sky but to me it is a wake up call love is a wake up call it is the only answer and that is why we have to wake up to and understand what it really is you know and it's not something that i need to receive because i already have it it's something i have to give and we can do that in everyday life a blessing a prayer everything we are each other's healers yeah but i don't know how to heal okay wake up and just open your hands activate them put them on people have done that since ever since uh, people came into the earth and we can do that everyone can do it but when you say i cannot do that i haven't taken the course i haven't got the exam then of course you can't the moment you say i can of course i can you can mm-hmm. for those who have trust everything is possible it's, it is written there and um, it is not written because the one who wrote it did not know what he or she was writing about it was a deep experienced person who wrote that and um, now we need to take responsibility for this and start doing it instead of talking so much about it or reading about it again and again and again coming back going away coming back going away there will be a point in our life when we need to stop and just say okay now it's the time how many times do i want to run down that blind alley and find out it is a blind alley i mean how stupid can can one get you know and one day you wake up and think okay this is total stupidity now i go the other way and now I really are doing what I have been writing or reading about for so long and um instead of having all those crazy projection about what it is and I I'm not talking about uh because I feel that I know everything but I have been there you know that I I projected things out that was completely crazy you know and i projected it into other people instead of taking responsibility for my own spirituality and starting to work with that enlightenment <clears throat> and it takes and i i think everybody is doing that 
ever and again without being acknowledging and thinking it's something else, it's something higher, it's something, it must be something because it cannot be me, you know, not me, you know. It must be something where you sit in a lotus position, uh, you know, all day long or something. You are you're up in the air. You you can do all kind of crazy magic things, you know. But the magic of this is the moment that you really mean something for somebody else in a that helping hand, that kind word, and so forth. Yeah. Well. Yeah. I recognize that, like, I've been taking distance from certain parts of life to uh, feel things through and, and to process. And, and I was starting to feel really, yeah, on a high vibe and really good. But as soon as I got into a new contact again, <laughs> new triggers. And, like, like, I cannot heal myself. And I think that's in general, people cannot heal themselves without relating to other people. But then there's the risk of traumatizing each other even further. So how can we help each other? You know, traumatized. You could say we are all traumatized by the crazy way we have put up with everything here. But you can sit down and be and just uh, disappear in your old traumas. Or you can wake up and start to transform the traumas by projecting a new truth, you know, because we are all traumatized, you would say. Absolutely. And there are some people that they 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 have their fingers um, just being squeezed a little bit, and it it affects their whole life. Other people they can be run over by a whole army, and they will rise up again and say, "Okay, come on," you know. So it's we are all traumatized, but we we can. We can change that like this in a moment by projecting a new reality, you know. And that's that's the first step out of this, you know, and really to take responsibility. You know, if you believe that we only have this life or this incarnation, of course, that 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 makes a whole lot of difference in many ways. But the moment that you know that there is that life is eternal. You know, it's only this body that doesn't last forever. But the spirit lives forever. Then you know that this opportunity that you got in this incarnation is just not randomly. You came here by choice and you came here with a certain purpose. And that purpose is to inspire, to raise the bar, so to speak, of, of consciousness because we are pure consciousness. And we have to raise the bar. We have to have a higher goal. And we can always do that. You know, whatever we do, being a striptease dancer, a CEO, the the most um, revered uh, teacher in the world, it doesn't matter. Or the man in the street, you know, living in a, living on the street. We can all, always raise the bar, so to speak. And that's what we're here for, you know, to inspire, to help, mm -hmm. to uh, widen that, um, to bless life, you know. And it's the most simple way of doing spirituality. And that's why I, I wanted Nalia here today, because um, she has also been such a big uh, inspiration for me. And that's what we worked, why we work together. And I would like just to give you and and um, what what a prayer can be, and uh, Nalia had just mm. um, today or yesterday came um, her first book, which is uh, a new interpretation of Psalm one hundred nineteen from the Old Testament, from um, the Book of Psalms, and the book calls the Love That You Are, and I would like her to read now. Uh, but one of the prayers, there are 22 prayers for each one of the Aramaic letters. Aramaic was the language of Yeshua or Jesus. And this mm -hmm. is something that goes deep, deep, deep into the tradition that we work with. The tradition of the Essenes where Jesus or Yeshua was and Mary the Magdalene was 
educated. And Nadia, I think if you just think about when she reads it, think about this, that something you can do if people haven't got more time in to do meditation. They could start the day just reading this aloud to themselves or to the household or whatever, and just take every word in and make it work. Take that impression out in everyday life. Project it into everything you do. When you leave that door, you go through out in the world. Let go through that prayer, become that, and you will see the changes and the experiences we are talking about. So I think we should just let Nadia do that prayer now. And yeah. later, I would also want her to um, read a prayer um, that I have used very much in my healing work that is from this book, The God Formula. But first now from uh, the love that you are. Will that be all right? Absolutely. Ferdinand? Um, more than welcome. To me, I just wanted to say before, um, because I, I really much heard you when you were saying about, um, you know, how can we then help each other or how can we be um, when you feel it's not possible to heal oneself. So to me, it really is that willingness of leaving the place of being right, so to speak, you know, um, to to stay in that open space with the um with the connection of what is around us uh, lasts us lots of time working with the um with the holy spirit um uh the ruka de kucha um and um it is that that we are willing to um to give what we are carrying if it's pain or if it's fear or if it is um um being not patient or being sad, um, mm. that we are willing to give that into another frequency. And to me, that's really the base of working with prayer. Um, so I'm reading the prayer um, from for Dalit, for the number four, um, from Psalm 119. Heavenly source of all being, I am light, born within the light. I raise all worldly matters into your presence. My life is filled with your vibration. In you, I find answers to all my questions. I am your blessings that I feel and share. I am the realization of your wisdom as I contemplate your wondrous works. When I walk the path of pain and sorrow, I remember to receive your glory and strength. I am the truth, the way, and the life. The grace of your presence is with me always. I have chosen the way of truth. My heart is filled with your light. I hold fast to your vibration. I will never lose my way. I am the path of your love. For your presence has set my heart free. Beautiful. And it is, um, <clears throat> to me, really the, the willingness of being dedicated to, um, to really living that what we all know and what 
we um, have in our heritage, our cosmic heritage. Mm. Cosmic heritage, beautiful. Yeah, it begs the question, who is you? Who is God? And I know that you have your uh, written whole books about it, but can you elaborate on that? Like, what is God? Who is the you in this prayer? Um, I call it the heavenly source of all being. Mm -hmm. um, that is consciousness. Mm -hmm. Because in consciousness, we move, we, we are being thought, we are, so to speak, the words of, of that wisdom, of that consciousness, eternally, eternally widening, eternally moving, um, eternally sounding. And um, to me, that's the biggest refuge that we can have when we think of what your question in the start was about why is there or what to do with evil in the world or why is there evil or something with evil I can't mm -hmm, mm -hmm. recall but it really to me there's just um, the one way that where ev all power comes back to us and that is to um, to decide to move into the unity in our thoughts and our emotions and to make the difference um, moment by moment in our own field. Um, Beautiful. So, and, could, and could you say that this consciousness, is it separate from us? Because when I hear a prayer, I was raised as a Christian, and I started to feel yeah, strange about the concept of God being outside of us. We're only praying to a God in the heavens uh, uh, yeah. What's your view on that? Well, I I really found for me that that uh, we are individualized God consciousness. So we are it. It is us. In that, in the prayer, I'm I'm saying, um, um, I am light, born within the light. Mm. You could say as well, born of the light. Um, um, but yeah. yeah, to really go and to sit with that, just these two lines will just open so many gates and so many, you know, you, you, you can enter into this piece, um, that will then, you know, that will shift our, our, our everyday life that we are stopping to, um, to having to know each every everything, but that we are willing to raise everything we don't know into a into an an attitude of listening, or a, an attitude mm. of, um, you know, for example, I had a very dear um, friend of mine who um, who was not well, and um, I was I was just connecting through the difference with uh, through the distance with him, and I. I was just laying in bed, just thinking the whole time, I am streaming love, I'm out streaming love, I'm pulsing this field. And that was as well working with my own perceptions of worry then, you know, or my, my, yeah, my, my field of thinking that the other one wouldn't be good or wouldn't be well. So I am myself being responsible now for not taking coming back to taking responsibility i am now responsible for not adding more confusing more pain to the world you know mm. thank you very much uh, nalia um, and and lars what, what is your view on the concept of god or what is the god formula you even wrote a book called the god formula so i'm very curious what your view is on that to me and to us, God is consciousness. W whatever could it be, you know? And um, it holds everything. All opposites become one in that consciousness. And we, the reason why we are already enlightened is that we can read in the Old Testament that God created man in his image. 
And uh, that image is actually um, that thing within us that is eternal and that through that consciousness we can also be co-creator of this in this world that is why we came here to be co-creator um, so everything that is happening is due to us here on earth you know all the craziness all the wars all the famines and the problems is something that we have created because we have forgotten all about who we are and what we what tools we were given when we came in here. So that is what spirituality is to us, is that we try to inspire people to get to find those tools again within us. It is not so much about what can I get, what is in it for me, because what is in it, this world is in it, this experience is in it, this incarnation is in it. So the question we should ask, why did we come here? We did come here because we had something to do here. We would like to make this a better place and a better experience. And also to develop all those tools that we have forgotten all about. So, mm -hmm. so in that way, we are, we are very connected to God consciousness. Yeah, I feel that. I feel that. And a question that, uh, that keeps coming back, with, not within our own audience, but I think more the people around it, so if yeah. there's this God who is pure consciousness, pure love, why is there so much evil? And you already mentioned it a little, saying because we forgot who we truly are, but why did we forget? What, what is the true origin of evil and what role does it play in the world? We were given free will when we came in here. That was a gift because you cannot be a creator without, without it. So everything here that we experience evil, as you said, and whatever, that is due to us. It has nothing to do with God. It's because we are, we are, um, we are, um, uh, what do we say? We are creating through the traumas, through the, the, um, the hurt child within, through our egos. That's what we are projecting instead of working through the God consciousness, you know? And you could say, Everything is God consciousness, yes, but it is how we interpret it. And if everything that we do has to come through our traumatized uh, projections and thought about what we are and what, or what we aren't, of course the world would be a crazy place like it is right now. But it's a world of huge opportunity for everyone who, who incarnates here. So it's both a school and it's also a place where we have to share all our gifts with each other, to inspire each other. We are each other's teachers, if you could see it in that way. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, and I saw that you uh, written a lot about Jeshua, and you talk a lot about it in podcasts. And one of the main things that hit me or struck me was that Jeshua was curing people from blindness. Mm -hmm. And... It was not literally blindness, but that Jesus could open up the eyes so we could truly see each other's essence. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And taking that, up, the, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. One of one of the, you know, in the in the New Testament, there is an Aramaic word that Jeshua was using every time he healed, ephata, and it means be opened. Um, soften everything that is rigid, loosen everything that is captured. It is to set free, it really means. And it comes from an Egyptian god called Petar, which is the possibility to open something. And that Petar is actually activated through the Aramaic language by Ephata. It is like a command and it sends vibrations of, of knowledge that have been forgotten in that moment and especially when it comes from a developed uh, spirit like Yeshua uh, so he knew exactly how that worked and what to do with his hands at the same time you know laying on of the hands mm -hmm. so for example everybody can we can just open our hands right now you could try to do it mm -hmm. just stretch out your hand and Right in this moment, you will feel in the in the center of the palm of my head how it start to 
tingle, you know? Can you feel it? Mm -hmm. And from the, the, the fingers, you know, how it's really streaming out. Just feel the power. And you can use that power, you can project that towards a person or somebody who needs something, to need that God consciousness that is now being emanating from you almost physically, you know, through your hands. Yeah. Because you want it to say, you say, now open up this, you know, and you can, in the same way you can, when you start, that is Ephata in a physical way, you know, to open up things, you know, and not to say, when people come to you and say, please, can you help me? You, you don't say, maybe I don't think, I, I really don't know. You say, of course I can. Yeah. And then you do it. Yeah, I know. I've did a Reiki course, which I think is a similar thing that you cure people and yourself with your hands. And mm -hmm. a friend of mine, his knees were aching. And I said, oh, I can try to do it with you. But I was calling to the highest being, to God. But the trying was not trying. I was just doing it. I felt like I'm going to do this. And it, and it cured him. Mm -hmm. and so that's, that's also a big surprise to me. Like, oh, whoa. Uh, but yeah, coming back to, to Jeshua and opening the eyes so we can truly see each other in our divine essence. And mm -hmm. your remark about we are all traumatized. That's also what we got came to the conclusion in our podcast series. Like the, yeah. the, we've lost track so far. We're so far off. And when I'm looking at the origin of evil and what evil is doing in our world, could it be that because of our own traumas, we are blind to see what the true purpose is of what evil is bringing in this world? Because when, when I look at all the teachers, the impact seems so limited. The world is in, in chaos, so many crises. But then I'm thinking, like, are we truly seeing what's going on? Like, what is the true purpose behind what we see? Like, is there a, a higher purpose behind evil? What, what are your feelings on this? Yeah, you, maybe I don't. I don't think uh, we need more evil, so to speak. I, I think we have had our our um, cop of that. You know, it's just it's we are blind to history. You know, it's it's just funny that everything that's going on has been going on for thousands of years, and yet we it seems that we we th we we think that this is the only the remedy for for error. Or for war, or for this, that is more war, more uh, violence. You know, and that is why it is so important. You know, we we are living in a society that is the result of a two hundred years of going into mat the 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 materialism of the world. You know, totally forgetting that we are spirit and what spirit is all about. So it is like. To me, it's like a huge, huge oil tanker that needs to mm. to shift direction, you know. And it really takes time. But how long, however long it will take, you just have to work on it. And that is something that I know that we are determined to do. I mean, there's nothing to just to, to sit down and give up, you know. We never give up, but we will give it up, you know, up on the to the higher. Uh, levels of spirituality, you know, to consciousness. Because too many people are just giving up in hopelessness. Mm -hmm. Give it up is to, for example, go into a prayer that Nadia just read. And the next thing I would like her to read is from this little uh, book, The God Formula, because it's full of healing prayers. And if you need to have also another perspective of who you are, this is a prayer that you can you can start reading. I am, we are, or you are this or that. But right now, I don't know what Nadia will choose to, to read. Just we are maybe because yes. it's something that is directed to everybody. But you can also just read it to yourself. I am, 
I have used that prayer so many times in healing um, healings, and it's so powerful and so effective. Yeah, and maybe just to say before, it's like um, no matter how many teachers there are on earth or how long already that that um, development is that we have all witnessed um, and um, how, how often one could say, oh, haven't we learned anything yet? Um, but I mean, it stays like the one thing that is needed is to live what we know and to really, really have the experience of that we are um, responsible for anything that leaves our fields, any, any emotion, every thought. And if we, are, if we start to really live that, if we stop thinking that that is wishful thinking or that's fluffy love or that's whatever, you know, if we stop making that smaller, but, you know, that we, we are saying, no, it is, it is fine to live in wisdom or in care or in, in, in a way of relating totally different to each other. Um, I think until then, it will not be possible really um, mm -hmm. to change it. Yeah. So this is the uh, prayer that, like Lars says, he has been using a lot with his clients um, when he was doing a lot of healings. Um, and it's on, in the little green book on page 187 in the edition I have, if someone wants to um, look it up later. Mm -hmm. We are forgiveness that is working here, dissolving now all doubt and fear, making man eternally free with wings of grace and glory. We are the ones that call with full force for forgiveness at every moment to all life everywhere. We let the mercy of forgiveness flow. We are the light in the heart that radiates in the darkness of everyday life and transforms everything to the golden treasure trove of Christ's spirit. We are the ones that send our love to the world to erase all delusions and to break down all barriers. We are the power of endless love, reinforcing itself for all eternity. That is beautiful. And you can, uh, you can uh, change we are with I am or you are. So what I used to do was to read this prayer for the clients very, very, you know, when they were lying on the couch, just sitting next to them and almost whisper the, the, the prayer saying, you are this, mm -hmm. you are just repeating that prayer again. If, could you, if, bit, one second, could you hold up that little book? Can you show it? Yeah. You yeah. have it here. Uh, you. No, I've seen that book before. One second. Yeah. Two years ago, we've launched our book. And mm -hmm. a week after our launch, I bumped into that book <laughs> with the golden dot and... And we were like, and we, and I read the back, and it's so uh, overlapping. There's so much recognition, <laughs> and now we're in a podcast together. <laughs> Amazing! Oh wow! Yeah, that was another question I've prepared with a friend of mine. Yeah. Um, what your view is on 
um, coincidence and synchronicity. Well, <laughs> there's one <laughs> with the book. There's no coincidences in my view. You know, it's everything is. You know, we we are create. That's part of the our co-creative uh, tools. But if we are not aware of it, it, it comes as a surprise every time. But we are preparing the way for everything that happens in our lives without knowing it, sending out thoughts or wishes or leaving um, some something here or something there that will ignite something and it will all come back to us. Everything that we send out comes back to us in one way or the other. That's, that, that is proven. So, <clears throat> yeah. So there's not no such thing as a coincidence. In, yeah. In my view. Yeah, we experience a lot of coincidences in our podcast team with Joey, Katie, and me. Yeah. And at some point, we started to realize, like, we shouldn't be surprised with this. Like, this is normal. If we are in tune with the same field, of course this happens. Of course yeah. we have some sort of collective consciousness together. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's a nice recognition of a stepping stone, so to say, because, you mm -hmm. know, sometimes it's just so overwhelming, this whole reality. But to have these recognitions like, oh, wow, yeah, we're on the right track here. Mm, we're finding absolutely. our way back home. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and is there a way to facilitate this or how to get in tune, how to connect with a higher consciousness or with a unity yeah, field? By doing uh, the spiritual work that we find is uh, good for us, that we we res have resonance with, you know. And I think that's the, that's the job really when we take responsibility for who we really are, is to to find something that resonates with us. And then stick to it. This, that's the next thing, you know, that a lot of people, you know, and that is also something I, I myself have experienced when I started out, that mm -hmm. you, 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 you start, for example, to do prayer or whatever uh, exercises or practice. And after some time, if you don't feel anything comes back or it, anything shows, then you give it up or you, you, you just go to something else, you know, and it's the same thing happens there. You really have to be present in what you do and stick to it before mm -hmm. you can see if it has any result. But, you know, how we define result is totally different from what we usually do in, in, uh, in this part of the world. You put in the coin, and the automat opens and you take the the goods, you know. Well, what what fears do you have yourself still? Like, it sounds so easy, but I reckon you have your own challenges in your life. Why do you think that? Because you're human. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay. You've got a point there. Yeah, but do you... Like what? What is what is a typical thing that you keep bumping into? Like I can imagine uh, that you must have something, right? The only uh, irritating thing I bump into is really myself and my own, uh, you know, hurt child. You know that need caring and nursing once and again. You know, but <clears throat> I feel I'm getting better at it. You know. But... Mm -hmm. But as you said, we are human beings, and with that packet comes all all those emotional stuff that we have to deal with. But I also feel that it's true that that we become uh, those enlightened beings in this incarnation, because this is what rules here. This is the real the, the ruler on on this uh, yeah. level we are, you know, emotions. And I think it's a beautiful thing because it also. <clears throat> offers these gifts that to give, you know, and to give in a in a way where you are present in it, within it, you know. And you it opens up doors, it opens up hearts, it transforms things. Yeah. And I think that's really the way when you're saying how can one be sure what's pure and what's not. And I think um when when you don't ask yourself the question, what's in there for me? 
like yeah when you're not strategic when you're not you know um that doesn't mean uh that you you cannot plan or something that's not yeah I mean. yeah you, i recognize that another agenda than what you're saying exactly exactly when someone tells yeah, but, you something and you're saying oh yeah me too but it's not true or when someone is doing something and you're like all right okay that's fine for now but mm, not quite sure you know when when you're going into compromising of of resonance you know mm -hmm. uh, when you're yeah going, isn't that a true sin that uh, Joshua talked about there's no sin in in Aramaic language it doesn't exist The word for sin, sin doesn't exist. Yeah. It's Qatar. It, it, what it means is to miss the mark. And if, if you miss the mark, it is because you are too far away from the goal. So it is actually the lack of presence. If you're not present, you cannot succeed. That's what it means. But right. sin in the, as a concept, as we have been taught, doesn't exist really. It is an error, but not an error that cannot be be repaired. You know, you can you can try again. You can always try again. There's nothing like a deadly sin. Everybody knows, I mean, that you don't take life. You don't kill some other. That's, I mean, I would reckon that if there's somebody who doesn't know about that, it's because somebody is really, really sick you know, and mm -hmm. needs help. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, of course, that happens, you know, that there are people who are so tormented that they cannot, they're not able to see through that. But all of us knows what is right and what is what we shouldn't do, you know. And yet still, we all do it once again and again. Yeah, exactly. And then we lie about it or we push it away. It's like, no, no, that's not us. But... Some people do, yeah. But I think also there's a lot of, most people... I feel it's very, I mean, they are orderly people. They, they, they want peace. They want to live. And I, th I think because we are maybe work with spirituality in a very, that's our dub, you know, that's why we came here. But other people, you know, I, I know people who never talks about these things. They are it, you know. Mm -hmm. Everything they do is just, you know, this is just a natural thing to them to do things. They don't have to speak about it in, in, in different kinds of ways. Yeah, I'm wondering now what, what enlightenment is, how we should define it. Like where, where I'm at now is that I think or I feel that it's impossible to get rid of the inner child things, the traumas, the darkness inside of us. We can only become aware of it, so it doesn't take us over. But I think as soon as we think uh, I'm there, I don't have any darkness in me anymore, it will get you. Like, oh, well, what is your view on this? What is your view on enlightenment? I mean, it's, a transformation is just not once in a lifetime. We, tra we can transform any moment, any time wherever we are mm -hmm. right now we have to deal with stuff you know that comes up because we're producing so much projection all the time we are masters of projection we are drama queens but instead of going in and become the drama we can step outside and see it from outside and then we can start to transform it and we can be part of that information everywhere we go it is we can bless everything every moment is a new opportunity absolutely yeah so I always like to be, make things more concrete so they not only on an informational, inspirational level, but to really bring it into fruition, to bring it into real life. So maybe Nalia, maybe you can share a, a practice that I or people, the viewers can do about the things discussed today on how to integrate it. Because otherwise, you know, you get this big head full of information, inspiration, Whereas your body, your being uh, lags behind. Yeah, of course. Thank you. Yeah. If you like, just close your eyes now um, mm -hmm. and feel your heartbeat. Just allow yourself to arrive, drop into yourself. 
and see it as a welcome coming home. No need to do anything, to run anywhere, just allowing to be. And feel where you sit near your chair. See if anything would like to relax somewhere in your body. And again, go there with kindness and greeting and relax it. And now, of all the qualities that you know are present, all the God qualities that we have been packing out, like love, peace, wisdom, power, or the ones below, like joy, all these qualities, transformation, abundance, just invite everything to you into your heart space and decide for today, maybe the next three weeks, what of these qualities that I am because I carry them, what would I like to give to the world on a vibrational level, flooding out of my heart for the next three weeks. So, for example, for me, that would be love. I am love. And whenever I do anything, go anywhere, be in a queue in a supermarket, write an email, answer a call, when I feel stressed, when I feel relaxed, no matter what, I dedicate myself. I am love. Or whatever you wish to dedicate yourself to. But take a decision now. And stick to it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. And it brings me one last question yet. So when you say on a vibrational level, do you mean you radiate it instead of expressing it with words? Absolutely. So the word needs to be filled first by the vibration. Got so, it. To have it as an essence, as a frequency. And that again comes back as well to your question where you say, how can I be sure when I know that that word that I say or that that glance that I exchange is actually on the wave of the frequency instead of trying to project something that is not really coming on exactly wonderful all right thank you so much thank you very much Ferdinand. yeah well i'm gonna wrap it up for the audience and uh, yeah. we'll say goodbye mm -hmm. all right uh, dear viewers yeah. i hope you have enjoyed this episode overseas to uh, denmark uh, you can enlist to our uh, newsletter uh, on our website tightbooklumens.nl uh, but you can find the website in the description and also in the co main comment, the first comment below this video. On our website, you can find more content also in English. And we will uh, start translating our books to English as well. So you can read this book as an ebook in English. But we're working on that. So stay tuned and uh, see you next time. <laughs>